We are live in Los Angeles at one of the largest slaughterhouses in the country. And we are standing here with a gentleman representing Animal Alliance Network. It is the second day of the new year and these animals are not enjoying the new year like most of us are. Tell us, Jack, yeah. how are you doing tonight? Good, I'm happy to be here. Uh, it is always really sad to see the pigs like this, but as sad as I feel, I can only imagine how bad it is for them. And that's kind of the whole point is for everybody to put yourself in their perspective and just to think about it differently. A lot of us just think, oh, pigs are meant to be bacon. Some of us think pigs are meant to be our friends and we should treat them with love. So we're gonna go closer and check it out. The police officers are here are kind. They're joining us. Thank you so much officers for your time and your dedication. Uh, we just found out that one of the police officers has a, um, a pig at home. So you can get kind of a closer look right here. You can see them all crammed in there. How far do you think the pigs are coming? Yeah, it depends. You know, they could be coming from as far as the East Coast, uh, Idaho, just anywhere in the Midwest, the South. It just depends. Um, no way to know for sure how many days they're on the road, but it is probably multiple days. As far as we know, they don't have any food or water along the way. There's no it stops for them. Do you know why they have a pink paint or blue paint on them? I can't say for sure, but I assume that the factory farms that they come from, they're going to be marked just for various reasons to be able to separate them into different groups, um, just based on various reasons. Um, no way to know exactly why we have to get more information from the farms they can't They're crammed in there. They yeah. have no space to turn around. Yeah, very crammed and when they have to go to the bathroom, there's they you know, they have to go right where they are. So you can smell this it. This is a two layer truck also. Correct. Two layer truck. So we have plenty of pigs above us as well. And uh, as you can see they kind of get scared sometimes. And that's why we're hearing them squeal and move around. But we're gonna try and uh, show, give them comfort, and, uh, give them water, and just try and make it so that their last moments. The sadness in their eyes. Look at the sadness. In yeah. Their eyes. And this is what I'm talking about when I say put yourself in their perspective. Imagine you're this pig right now. Okay, so at this point, we have to step back away from the truck because the truck's now gonna enter the slaughterhouse. So this is it for these pigs. All the pigs we just saw, they're going to have their throats slit very soon and that's it. And uh, for those of you who eat bacon, pork, sausage, or ham, I just challenge you to put yourself in the pig's perspective and ask yourself if you'd be okay with being treated that way. And if not, then how could you possibly support this? Doesn't that seem a little hypocritical to say, you know, I wouldn't wanna be treated this way, but that's okay to treat a pig that way. To me, that doesn't make any sense. And by the way, if those were pigs or cats or humans for that matter on this truck, I don't think anybody would be okay with it. So I just want you to think about that. It's not, you know, we're not coming from a place of being judgmental or rude or condescending. We just really do feel bad for these animals. And I actually also feel bad for the slaughterhouse workers, the people that have to be responsible for doing this. I mean, most of you watching this right now, how would you feel having to stab a bunch of pigs in the throat every night? Is that a job that you would want? Is that a job you'd want your children to have? I mean, just think about those things and consider not eating pork, sausage, or ham. That's all I have to personally say, but I want to talk to some other people so you guys can hear more than one perspective on this. All right. Hi, Janelle. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Hi, what, what brings you out here tonight? Um, I'm basically just here for the pigs, making sure they get the love and compassion that they deserve before they enter the slaughterhouse. Um, we're all here for the same reasons. We're all here supporting each other, which is a really beautiful thing, but mainly what we focus on is getting footage of what really happens behind closed doors and at these industries and making sure that the pigs get what they deserve before they die. How long have you been coming to the vigil? For about a year now. Yes. <laughs> You've been coming once a week for a year. Yes. Religiously. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have no words. Thank you. Yeah. And it's actually my friend's first time at 
Donnie. Hi. My name is Donnie. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. What is Hi. your name? Donnie. Where are you from, Donnie? Montreal, Canada. Montreal, Canada. Yeah. How long have you been in uh, Los Angeles? For about 10 days now. For about 10 days. Yeah. Is this your first vigil? It's my first vigil, your yeah. First vigil, 10 days. Uh, how long have you been vegan? Uh, 15 months. Now. 15 months. Are you doing any activism in Canada? Um, this is my first form of actual street activism. I raise a lot of awareness online every day. Uh, posting about healthier options that people should eat, you know, um, just, you know, anti-animal cruelty, of course, exploitation of animals, and just, you know, raising awareness every single day about all the choices that we have um, for substitutes that we do not need to um, support animal exploitation or slaughter just to eat food. There's so many amazing options out there, so I'm just happy to be here uh, shedding some love and light to the pigs before um, they you know, go on their way, and I'm um, happy what to be here with the community. What possessed you after 15 months? What drove you after 15 months to come to your first vigil? Um, well, actually, you know, I don't know of any vigils that really happen in Canada as much, so uh, following a lot of vegans out here in the California area, um, Janelle being one of them, I know that I always watch her stories, and she's always at these vigils, so uh, as soon as I came down, I said we have to get to a vigil together, and I asked her to, to bring me, so just happy to be here to help you know give them some water and pet them and show them some love that they, they deserve. Janelle, what organization have you been um, representing the le this last year? Um, Animal Alliance Network. Yes, I just love the community here. We're all very supportive and yeah. <laughs> and you brought your friend. And how did you guys meet? Online. We met on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Just... <laughs> so you're, in, uh, you're a social media activist, Janelle. Um, I try to be, yes. I try and post as much content as I can. And I try to spread as much awareness as I can. That's very nice because a lot of people that spread um, that post online content um, sometimes isn't effective. So for it to be uh, effective and for you to come all the way from Canada yeah. because of posts and content that she was loading 100%. says a lot that's, about the content that she's posting and about you to, exactly. to take a chance really. Exactly. And now I'm here to be able to share this with all my followers which I share them all the delicious food and I talk about the effects of the environment and how terrible animal cruelty is but now to show them the actual pigs on their way into the slaughterhouse because people are disconnected that's the problem. Uh, majority of the population have no idea really the, the process of how this meat gets packaged up and onto their plates and now you know I'm going to show them footage of the eyes of these pigs and how thirsty they are and how much they're suffering as they you know come here so don't. there's no comforting words no, no, no. that we can offer each other or the animals That's right. um, this is very painful uh, to experience uh, it's painful to to report um, to know that that she's been coming here for a year religiously and you just started people that have been vegan for 40 50 years are, are just really um, they're proud of us I'm hearing that that they're very proud of us because you know after so I mean look at Gary Yurofsky right he can't just kind of after a while you just know that there's other ways um, to support right and this is the only way that we can get this information out is by supporting each other showing up every day and as, as much as I'm gonna be in California in the LA area I'll be at these vigils every every night that they're here you know as, as much as I can be here because what's more important than this taking an hour, two hours, three hours out of your day just to show a little bit of extra love and compassion. You know, it's one thing to not eat them, but here we are here helping them and spreading some love and light to them and being here for the community. So. What is your social media? Uh, vegan as fuck. I have my sweater <laughs> here. <laughs> All right. Vegan as fuck. I yeah. love that. So try to make it very loud. So I wear this um, everywhere I go pretty much uh, on the beaches, you know, to the malls. And um, I want to break the stigma that you're not going to be all skinny and small if you're a vegan. You can still be a big manly guy and the big beard, with the big beard. Yeah. 
you know, and... Uh, and Janelle, where, what is your social site? It's Janelle LL underscore. <laughs> it's confusing. <laughs> J-A-N-E-L-L-E-L-E-L-E -E 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 underscore. Thank you so much for your time and Thank for your you. dedication to the animals. Of and Thank you for so much. Thank you for everything you. that you do. Thank you. You see activists have gathered from all over the world to support animal cruelty. You just sit there like trucks pull up every five to ten minutes. Yeah. Today I hear it's been a consistent night every eight to ten minutes. I'm gonna talk to our friend Bobby here. Bobby, you have a second? Okay, cool. Hi Bobby. I'm just gonna ask you the basic questions I've always asked. What brings you out here tonight? Why are you here? And just tell us about the experience so far. Uh, I'm here to bear witness to what most people, even even a lot of vegans, um, are afraid to do, is bear witness to the reality and mortality of the animal agriculture industry. And um, I think it's important for vegans to come out here, especially non-vegans, but even vegans, so that they, they know it. They know what it is. They don't just watch it. You know, it's a different experience. This is my second time here. It's so hard to come. Yeah. You come every, I, the both times that I've been here, you've been here. Yeah. How often do you, do you visit, do you attend? I'm here at every vigil. And that's how? Every Sunday, every Wednesday, uh, we have a chicken vigil and a cow vigil on Thursdays and Fridays. So yeah. Why do you feel that you have to attend so many vigils, Bobby? Well, because I've, uh, I've been out here and it's... Like, there are times when I get tired, but tired is not a good enough excuse, you know? Um, it's a really strange... It's, it's, a hard, it's hard to explain the experience of coming here and learning that the world isn't so black and white, you know? Um, and I think that bearing witness and sharing this on social media and with other people that don't come out here is, is, is important. And if I have the time, I'm going to be out here. So it, it, it costs me very little to be out here. And it's, it costs them everything when they're here. So, yeah. It's the first vigil of the year. Yeah. While everyone was out celebrating, enjoying their family, enjoying their meal, you guys were here. Yeah. Second vigil of the year. How do you feel? Um, I'm optimistic for 2019. You know, in 2018, a lot of great things happened for animal rights, uh, especially here in LA with uh, cosmetics and fur and uh, now straws and only shelter animals can be sold at uh, pet stores so a lot of great things are happening and uh, I think that 2019 is going to be just as productive or better as long as we we don't rest on our reputation as long as we get out here and you know we keep working hard so yeah what do you think as animal activists that we can do more for the animals in the community um I think whatever you whatever you can do, whatever kind of outreach, you know, I've been asked questions like, uh, do you think it's every vegan's uh, obligation to be an activist? And I don't want to tell vegans what to do, but um, there's one thing that guarantees, uh, like, I can guarantee you zero results come from zero action. You know, uh, whatever, you, you can't know what your results are going to be, but... If, if you don't get up and you don't do something, nothing's gonna happen, and neutrality favors the oppressor. So I, I think that just being an activist, whatever it is, if it's outreach, if it's cubes, if it's just talking to your friends about it, you know, it, it all helps. It all, it's all an extra hand on the pickle jar, as they say. How long have you been vegan now, Bob? Three years. Yeah. And um, every year since going vegan has been better than the last. There is not a single thing I will ever do for the rest of my life that will have a greater impact on my life and the lives of everything on this planet than going vegan. It's the greatest thing I will ever do. 
do you feel that going vegan has brought you uh, closer in connection to understanding and acknowledging your purpose? Um, I mean, I've made this. I, so, I don't. I, I don't know about if you ask me like life purpose or meaning of life you do whatever makes you feel alive and then you don't care about what the meaning of life is because if you what you're doing you know gives you that feeling then you, nobody questions it when they're when they're feeling alive and they're feeling like they're helping and um, I don't know what the meaning of life is I don't know what happens after we die I do know there's suffering in the world and I can help so I'm vegan do you feel that before you went vegan, you were maybe a little lost and confused? Absolutely. I, no and, clarity. And now that you're vegan, you have some clarity. Yeah. And um, especially, I mean, from a health standpoint, I weighed 280 pounds when I was a diabetic. And uh, going vegan, I got my health back. And I was always conflicted because I, I majored in environmental filmmaking, called myself an environmentalist was always getting questions oh so you're a vegetarian or you're vegan and I have to, have to come up with some excuse on why I wasn't uh, so it's it's exhausting not having your morals and your lifestyle go hand in hand and when when you do that it, it, things get easier you know you, you, it's hard always trying to justify what you're doing when they don't really line up with what you really believe at heart you know but you didn't know no I didn't know uh, and it's getting harder and harder for people to claim ignorance today with social media and things like that, but we can't blame people who don't know. And, you know, we talk about, well, you know, they've been grown up, you know, their, their parents, they put them in, you know, they, they teach them that eating meat is okay, but the, it's, not, it's not an evil act. It's not as if their parents are doing it to be evil. It's, this is how they were raised, and this is how they're going to raise you, you know? It's just, it's, like most problems, it, comes, it stems from ignorance. You know, it's that simple. Uh, if we can educate more people, then there will be less ignorance in the world. Hopefully less willful ignorance, which is the most, I mean, just the worst thing is willful ignorance. When people know, and people know about this. I mean, if you say, I'm going to show you a clip from Earthlings. So they'll say, or, you know, from animal equality. They say, oh, no, 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 no that's okay. Because they know it's going to be horrible. You know, but then they convince themselves that it's okay when they go to the grocery store. So, but... Education, I think education is the best weapon, so. Yeah. Thank you, Bobby, for your time. Yeah, yeah thank your you. Dedication. Thanks, guys, for being Appreciate out here. You. Thank you. Thanks. I just saw you, wow, that was good. <laughs> yeah, saved you, just <laughs> saved your like life. <laughs> I just saw you give the peace sign. Yeah, uh, there's no reason to hate on these truckers. I mean, you know, for all we know, the trucker in there is a vegan activist, and they're just doing that to make a living. I mean, you might say, well, how could they... Um, support this how could they do that but when you think about it the only reason why we have truckers and we have slaughterhouse workers even the people that are specifically on the kill floor killing these animals they're only there because of the consumers so if, let's say everyone goes vegan animals aren't gonna die we're not gonna have slaughterhouses we're just gonna have you know oh do we have a truck come? no, no we're, we're going just walk and we'll talk. oh keep walking and talking so yeah we just we're love-based that's the bottom line so we throw the peace sign because we're not here to uh, talk trash on anybody we're just here to show love to the animals it's as simple as that so many people show up yes it, it's it's inspiring to come out here Very inspiring. and speaking of you know what we got a truck coming All right. right now so we'll get some more footage of these pigs the activists are running to get their water to prepare and bear witness. Yes. So, once again, guys, uh, the trucks are filled with pigs. They're crammed in there, living in their own filth. They've gone days without food or water, and uh, we're going to just get a closer look at it and so you can see uh, what it looks like for them. The smell is horrendous. Yeah. You do kind of get used to it, but it's it's always there. You know, it's it's bad. And the bacteria that is splattering. Oh yeah, it's, it's the feces. I'd like to go somewhere where we have like a good amount of light, like right over here, so we can really 
get a closer look. Back How many activists now. do you think we have here today? Um, oh boy, I'm just eyeballing it like 40, 40 to 50 maybe. Roughly, uh, what do you, um, how many activists? Like 40. Yeah. Give or take uh, weekly. Well, I'm sorry, what do you mean? Um, 40 about every week. You oh, think? yeah, like the average 30 to 40 Sundays um, with LA Animal uh, Safe. We sometimes have more, like we've had like hundreds of people show up. Um, sometimes we'll get like really well-known vegans, like famous vegans right. that have millions of uh, subscribers on Instagram and YouTube, and so more people will come because they just, you know, they get inspired. But, um, yeah, it, it's so awesome seeing people come out here, and that's why we want people to come out here. Because the more we get, the more noise we make, the more people will kind of see what's going on. Um, so, I'm trying to get the numbers. Actually, if, I wanted to talk to Max, maybe, Let's do it. get his get his take on this whole situation. I've got a second to talk to the, the world about... standing next to you. Thanks for uh, shining the light. I appreciate yeah. you. I know I'm putting you on blast. Uh, I know you're a smart guy, though, so I wanted to ask you, like, for the vegans that are, like, at home saying, oh, that would just be way too hard for me to go, it's just way too depressing, how do you tell them, you know what, you should come out here anyways? Like, what, what would you say to that? Um, feel free yeah. to take your time with that. Don't feel rushed. Yeah, 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 uh, absolutely. So um, I would just show up. I mean, you got to make the connection one of these days. You know, it's, it's 2019. It's time to wake up and see what is actually going on. What do you want people to wake up to? How do you open your back? The truth. Which is? Violence on your plate. What? Yeah. Simple yeah. as that, right? Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. How uh, often do you attend the vigil? I attend uh, once or twice a week. I try to. Where um, are you from? New Jersey. How long have you been here? I moved here two months ago just for the activism. It's like a bull. You know, you don't gotta struggle. How long have you been vegan? I've been vegan uh, two years in September. 
and I was vegetarian five years before then. Um, I was at my buddy's barbecue. It was 11, 11, 11, and he handed me a steak, and I just looked at it and made the connection right there and then. I said, I'm not eating meat anymore. What was it? What, was, what connection? I saw a cow when I looked at the piece of meat, the flesh on the on the plate. Was something happening prior to that? No. I mean, that just seems like such a, it, a, you know, such a strong yeah. life to have. Yeah, yeah, actually my birthday, my 21st birthday was a couple weeks before then and I was at I was at Hooters eating chicken wings. And then uh, on 11, 11, 11, I was at a barbecue and it just hit me right there and then. And it wasn't the same ever since then. So you came down here two months ago, you moved, you packed up and moved to yep. Los Angeles to become an animal rights activist. How's it going so far? Amazing. Tell us about that. Um, I wish I would have done it sooner. That's my only re regret. Um, How does your family feel? You packed up everything, you're like, see you guys later. They were going to go save the planet. Yeah, they're, they were supportive um, in the beginning. And uh, once I you know when they come to visit I'm definitely going to take them out here to show them the, the truth what's going on on their plates and hopefully convince them to go vegan well you know you can go back to New Jersey and start your uh, animal alliance network group there yeah right. that's true yeah yeah that is a dream of mine I'm sure Jack can make that happen right yeah I'd love to help I lived in the east coast for a little bit in Pennsylvania so I can deal with the cold I'm used to it but yeah, the Tell more... us your um, social media where people can find you. Yes, I am a vegan for animals with a Z on Instagram. How long? Have, so you just came out. You um, you've only <laughs> known Jack for a few months, and uh, where not do you even, see not you? even. Not yeah. even. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So where do you guys? Where do you see yourself now after this? Um, right now, I see myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, right now, I just see myself uh, attending weekly and, you know, holding the light for, you know, everyone and being uh, supportive when someone needs me and doing the most I can, you know, when I can. And uh, someday, maybe be in his shoes and be an organizer. Without that'd be a doubt, great. That'd, be, that'd be a dream, yeah. That will definitely happen. Yeah, that's the next step for sure. Set it out, set it to be your goal. Yes, for sure. Yeah, right? 2019. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank and your you. Contribution. Yeah, thank you for being out here. Thank you for spending your holiday and for um, giving up your corporate job to come out and become a full time activist. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Um, that was amazing. Yes, it was. See how people come out from all over the world to pursue activism. People come to Los Angeles to become actors. This yeah. gentleman came out to become an activist. I mean, that's powerful, Jack. Yeah. What do you say? I just think that it's easy to become an activist as long as you put yourself in the animal's perspective. Because, again, if you were on the truck, you wouldn't say, oh, I don't want you to waste your time trying to help me or my fellow animals that are being killed it's I don't want to bother your guys this time you would be so desperate you would be begging for help you'd be pleading like please help me save me so when you put yourself in the animals perspective being an activist is is it's amazing all the personal problems you have in your life they start to like you start not to care because you're like there's bigger issues there's animals that are true victims I'm not a victim what because I didn't get into the college I wanted to I didn't get the job I wanted to or my girlfriend broke up with me those things don't become they just don't matter to you as much because you become so focused on real issues or much worse issues I should say and we got another truck coming okay we've been having a lot of trucks tonight so and how often do the trucks roll through you know it's it varies we got two this time it's, I think we got two uh, it's like every like five ten minutes sometimes it's like 15 20 minute break sometimes there's just a two minute break at, but the average is like 10 minutes maybe I'd say I would, I would say that's a good average and after this, if you want, we can go to talk to Brian. He's got some good uh, vegan food alternatives, so we can talk a little bit about so the, pra the practicality of going vegan. So we've got one truck here, and then another truck. If you look uh, yeah, to the left as well, we can. I guess we can go to this truck. Yeah. Um, what do you feel that the truck drivers? Um, how do you think they're feeling? I think that. When you do a certain job for long enough, you'll just become sort of desensitized. It just you'll just stop 
being bothered by it. And, uh, you know. There's no room in there. Yeah, they're very, very crammed in there. When we look at animals as, as commodities rather than sentient beings, it's not about them, it's about what makes the most profit. Uh, so that's why they're so crammed in there. We got a third truck coming. Janelle just informed of a, informed us the third truck coming right now. Within a three trucks. Yes. So within two minutes. Yeah. It's like I said, the aver the average fluctuates. We can get a close look in here, we can really see them in there. We can see them just you can almost tell like some of them almost they're just giving up already. They're just at this point where they're like, they look defeated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, their whole lives have probably been literally a living hell. And so they, you know, they just kind of want to probably rest in peace at this point. Some of them do. do is if we go to the back side of the truck we can look at the license plate and then we'll know so if you want to we can take a look let's do that let's be careful of the cop car so so idaho wow so all the way from idaho wow. so i mean i'm not an expert on uh road travel but I would say at least a couple days, at least 48 hours, I would say no food or water. And it's not just food or water. It's not like they're living in a, a day spa or some hospital. They're living in the, this like metallic, nasty trucks filled with their feces and urine, blood. Some of the pigs we look in there, they're, they're just dead. They're just lying there, rotting away. I mean, it's, you know, how can you say, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a compassionate person, how could you support this? How could you pay for this to happen? It doesn't really make sense, right? If you say that you're an animal lover, how could you support this? It doesn't make sense, you know? Uh, and I, I do want to look, I want to see if this is a fourth truck, by the way, because that would be pretty, sorry, that would be pretty uh, intense. Okay, so that truck there is not a pig truck, but the one behind it is. So that's four, four trucks with anywhere from like 60 to 100 pigs per truck. That's a lot of pigs. And the reason why there's a lot of pigs is because there's a lot of people that want bacon, pork, and sausage and ham, right? Yeah, Brian, it is a four, it's a fourth truck. Um, so yeah, once again, everybody, uh, live for Jane and Change. My name is Jack. I wanted to do another shout out for her. And uh, sorry, I'm sounding like a broken record, but put yourself in their perspective. Really think about what it's like for these pigs. Talk to Brian too uh, after the after the truck. Absolutely. Please. Talk to Brian because I wanted to show you guys. We're in some Vernon, interesting California, information. one of the largest slaughterhouses in America. You can see how thirsty they are. Just we've look had, at how they're uh, acting with this water. So far, we this is our six. Uh, uh, I think since minutes. we've gone live, it's been six. But we the activists have gotten here since 7:30. They are thirsty, gasping, dirty, and cold. Yes. You're begging for water, begging for water. Oh, the tumor underneath his ear. Is it a tumor? Oh, no. 
underneath his ear. Look. Oh, yeah, I see it. That he's pointing out. Yeah. See if you can get. Where, where is it? Where is it? Right here. Right here. This one. Hold on, let me try to get him to this right. way. Let me try to get him to this further over here. Come on. What's wrong? You guys are too early. We're activists. So, I wanted to, since we've obviously been talking a lot about, uh, you know, very depressing things, good news, we have a lot of wonderful vegan options, and I wanted to talk to um, this wonderful guy right here, Brian. Hi, Hi Brian. Brian. Hi. Give us your worst. Tell us about what you're out here and what you're doing. Yeah, basically leafleting, leafleting to the cars when they stop behind the trucks. That's mainly what I give them do. So, you see all your vegan alternative options there. See? Everything. See? Ben and Jerry's vegan ice cream. And who doesn't love ice cream, right? Yeah, exactly. Hagen does even make vegan ice cream now, so there you have it. Same flavor, just without all the cruelty. Exactly. And also, what is missing from here, though, is Miyoko's butter and cheese. Oh, I just yes. used that to make gnocchi on Friday. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Best vegan butter and cream cheese you'll get in here. You see, you've got a recipe kit. You see? Oh, I love that. We need that. Yeah, exactly. To help people get started to go vegan, you see. Try right, these tasty options instead of the cruelty. You see? Big free hot dog. Yeah, what's it? Um, Who doesn't love pudding? Yeah, uh, chocolate pudding. I miss pudding. Yeah. Now I get to have some. You do. Yeah, and also you see here, more recipes as well. See? Well, it looks delicious. Yeah, exactly. Instead of using cruelty, you can use, you see, look. Oh, look at those cake, pancakes. Blueberry pancakes. Scrambled tofu. Okay. So there you have it. Right. No need to consume Today any animal products. Shot? Yeah, consuming. Patty, we're, exactly. We're going to do a, a group picture down here. With Thank everybody. you so much for your time and You're your welcome. dedication to the animals. They appreciate you. Of course, Thank anytime. you so much. Tell right. us your name again. Brian. And where can we find you? Hey, you can follow me on Instagram, Brian C1995, Irish actor. Awesome. Thank you so much, All Irish right. actor. Anytime. Appreciate you. Yeah, so every vigil, we like to do a group picture because. Um, we just want to show people that are interested in doing activism that this is really like a love-based thing and there's a community here that they can be a part of. And we like to just basically prove to people that we really are out here. We're not just making a post saying you should help animals. We, we take pictures to prove, yeah, we were here. We witnessed it and we want people to make that connection. So I think we're doing the picture pretty soon here. Barking at me earlier. You see, who would want to eat a dog, a cat, or a pig? Look how beautiful animals are. Look, she's loving on me. She knows I just lost my puppy. Animals are so intuitive. what's happening okay we're backing 
up. We have another truck coming in. come out. This happens day in and day out at this location in Vernon, California. Activists gather daily to show the atrocities, to bear witness. To the animals that will soon be slaughtered. We are going to take a group photo. I'm going to continue the live. Gotta get our vigil mascot in it. Oh, I just heard he's the pig vigil mascot. <laughs> to hold it and you can get in. Patrizia Barreto for Jane Unchained. We are downtown Los Angeles in Vernon, California. At one of the world's largest slaughterhouses. Happens to be here in California. Activists gather here weekly to bear witness to the atrocities of animal cruelty. Thousands of animals meet their demise every second. They do a group huddle. their gratitude and appreciation. Please, please stop that. Saying, they all bear witness yeah. Yeah. once a week. Please just go. So we just want to say thank you guys for being out here on another cold winter and giving love and water to these beautiful baby pigs. Also, I just want to say, uh, whose first time is it again? Raise your hand. Thank you, guys. get killed here every night so we're going to be taking a moment of silence right now
truck is coming, guys. Make the hood come. <laughs> Stay in the hood. we can to these babies who do not deserve to be in this situation. So you guys are doing amazing work. Keep it up. We have to be here. Thank you. Anybody else want to share anything? How they're feeling, if it's the first time or even multiple times, and any good things, any bad things we can do better. Spread that love. Love is contagious. Positive energy is contagious. So negative energy is very contagious. So so it's positive. So. energy and has vibration and that vibration surrounds us is around the environment and we create the environment around us whenever we come here we spreading love we we, we create we, we are helping to transform this this slaughterhouse into a loving energy with our own vibration so in this new year 20, 2019 let's make a resolution to be positive and keep on fighting for the animals and stay united as serenity mm -hmm. and uh just spreading the awareness to all our family members, friends, and everyone that we know. Thank you everyone for coming here and uh, being a part of this movement. I wish you a very happy new year, 2019. Thank you. Yeah, like I've only been vegan for a little bit over two years and in my short time I've seen it explode and it's because of uh, the activism scene. The activism scene here in LA is literally the best. I've been in Europe, I've been in India, and man, in nothing compares to LA and it's because of people like each and every one of you who, who come in uh, driving an hour two hours away or whatever it is and to come and bear witness when uh, you can be like I said doing anything else but it's very inspiring to come back home and seeing uh, all these new faces that I've uh, you know I've been gone for a while so seeing all these new faces um, new people come in uh, bringing other people non-vegans that we want here obviously um, and bringing people that, uh, you know, family members or whatever it is, it's just uh, just so inspiring to be back here in LA and seeing the, the amazing community that we have. Because uh, literally the LA chapters are the biggest ones in the world and I'm fucking proud of that shit, you know? I'm proud. I've been a, a, a bunch of places and nothing even compares to LA. So, um, and actually, this is why this guy actually moved out here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. For those tuning in, I'm Patricia Barreto. We are downtown. Vernon, California, at one of the largest slaughterhouses in the United States, where animal activists and organizations gather daily to bear witness to 
thousands of animals that are slaughtered every second. This is a huddle of the activists that have come together tonight. This is the first vigil of the year. Sadly, the animals are not going to have a happy new year. and consume products by vegan creators, developers. Hi, Ellen. <laughs> Hi, Patricia. How's it going? How are you, Ellen? What a powerful, powerful vigil. This is incredible. I can't believe that you do this every week. Thank you. Tell us how. How do you find the energy to do this? Um, well, I always say somebody has to do it, you know. And so I have the energy still, and I'm uh, still trying to be out here. I'm about five months pregnant, but uh, you know, so eventually I'm gonna have to take a break. Uh, but until that point, I plan to be out here and do whatever I can to help the movement and make sure people see what's happening out here. And I have a lot of help. Thank goodness. And uh, hopefully I'll have even more help uh, when that time comes. So, How long have you yeah. been doing this? 
uh, gosh, since August of 2017, I believe. Yeah, so it was every two weeks back then, and uh, uh, we started Animal Alliance Network in January of 2018. So it's going to be a year. Yeah, it'll. Yeah, it'll be it, it's basically a year now. Yeah, because it was at, like the first of January when we started this. So thank and what you. What drove you to form this alliance? Uh, well, the group before us uh, showed instability, so uh, we didn't want this to stop, and so we decided to have our own group and uh, take away some of the stigma from the prior group. And uh, we just uh, got together, brainstormed, uh, myself, Heather, and Sarah at the time, and uh, we founded this uh, this group. And uh, now we're a 501c3 nonprofit as of May, and uh, you know we're ready to do anything that we can to help all animals. That one, we got a rogue animal right now. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're just here, and if anybody needs help, and if there's anything that we can do, um, it's not just about vigils for our group, although they're incredibly important, and our foundation, uh, we are trying to help as many animals as we can, uh, including humans, where we're about human rights too, so um, feel free to contact us anytime, at Animal Alliance Network on Facebook, at Animal Alliance Network on Instagram. Tell the new vegans I, I never liked what they could expect if they were to attend a vigil. Uh, a great community, an amazingly uplifting community. Um, I won't lie and, and say that this is not sad. Uh, I was pretty wrecked my first couple of vigils. Uh, but, you know, these people make it so much better. All these people around that you see here, uh, they make this this experience so much better. And it's ex it's incredibly powerful. Outside How many people do you think um, attended your vigil today? Uh, probably a good 40. Yeah, we didn't do an official count, but we, we tried to, you know, have about 40 to 50 people. Um, there's never any pressure. You'll never get pressure to come back. Uh, if you want to come back, you can. Some people just come one time, and, and that was enough for them, and, and that's fine. I, I respect uh, what people are able to handle. And then we have people that have been coming for a year, every Wednesday, every Sunday, because with Sunday they have the LA Animal Save Vigils. So, um, you know, I really commend those people that come twice a week out here. So I can only do the once a week. Most of the time, I'll try to make it to the LA Animal Save Vigils as well when I can. Uh, but it's just important to me to to do my part as much as I can in any way that I can. And uh, let me tell you that this is a life changing experience to come out here and see this in person. Uh, it's one thing to watch the videos, but to actually come out here. See this in person, connect with these animals in person, with these pigs. Um, it's incredibly powerful and it, it will it will change you. It will change you. It will be something that you'll never forget. Speaking of change, it's the second of 2019. So good. And this is how you chose to spend your time. It seems like change is coming. Yes. Yes, it is. Tell us how and why. Um, well, I think people are waking up. I think people are starting to get the information that they need in order to to decide to make that change. Because knowledge is half the battle. Just knowing is half the battle. And then what action will you take in order to, you know, put that into action? Like, what are you going to take with that intention and, and actually change the way that you live in order to live more compassionately when you see, when you see animals in this kind of distress, when you know that eating them hurts your health? When, when you know that the planet is dying from eating animals. So, I mean, it's, it's one thing to know and it's another thing to do. And that's what we're out here doing. We're, we're doing it. And being vegan is amazing in itself. But actually getting out here and being active, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a vigil. It can be any event. It can just be you on your social media just sharing information. Um, there's so many different forms of activism and, and ways to get out in the community and get the word out there to help other people wake up and, and have the opportunity to make that change. And you never do know who you're going to reach 
with even the smallest post. I've had people come to me a year later that never liked a single post that I did, and they'll tell me that they've gone vegan and they had their whole family go vegan. I had no idea. So, um, you know, we, I know we make vegans here when they come here and they see these animals and uh, you can do this too. You can do this too, one person at a time. Uh, we will get to this population. We will, we will see a tipping point. And, uh, you know, I hope to see that really soon because our planet is depending on us that's to exactly, make this happen. That's great. It's so true. Uh, um, you can do this. You just made such an amazing um, statement such a powerful statement with you can do this too that you and two other people sat down got together and said we have to continue bearing witness and bringing attention and you said you can do this too tell the viewers how they can also um, become part of your network and uh, create their own alliance in their city or town country Absolutely. I mean, we, we're part of the SAVE movement, um, which is the overlying uh, organization, and it has over 500 groups worldwide. So if you go to the thesavemovement.org, uh, you can actually make your own chapter of the SAVE movement. And they have everything from the, the pig saves to the cow saves to the ocean saves to the climate change saves. Uh, I mean, they're they're really doing it, and uh, you know, it's it's a lot simpler than you think to be able to organize something like this. Um, it does take dedication. It does take you know some hard work, but it's it's so incredibly worth it. I, I can't think of another movement that is more important than what we're doing out here. Um, you know, just trying to trying to save everything. Everything that is in existence is in jeopardy right now. And it's because of our decisions, it's because of what we consume, what we wear, and how we live our lives as human beings. We can literally destroy this planet if we don't change soon. So I encourage people to get active. We are. There's a, um, there's a call to action that by 2026 will be uh, most of the animals, if not all, will be extinct by then. How do you feel about that statement? Yeah, um, wildlife vertebrates uh, will probably be extinct by 2026 according to Dr. Celeste Rao with uh, Climate Healers. Uh, so uh, definitely check out climatehealers.org for more information about year zero, year 2026. Um, we got a lot of change to make in a very short amount of time and uh, you know I, I hate to speak so seriously but this is such a dire situation. Um, we may not have a planet for my child to live in and anybody else's children to live in. And we will see this within our lifetime. We will see this destruction within our lifetime. So this is not something that, oh, the next generation is gonna have to deal with this. This is something that we are creating now that will affect the next generation and ourselves. What can you tell the viewers that they can begin today? Uh, Give us five steps that they can take today to become vegan, to try to save the planet and themselves. Uh, gosh, uh, like a five-step program. Uh, you know, I guess it would start with uh, what you consume, what you're even buying. Not even a step program. How about yeah. tips? Yeah, tips. Uh, yeah, so tips are, you know, th think about what you're doing. Like, think about every action that you take and, and what those consequences are for those actions. Uh, from what you eat to what you wear uh, to, like, how much plastic you're using. I mean, all of these things are interconnected and it's all affecting our planet and it's affecting the animals animals and affecting us we are animals we are primates so we are being affected by these choices so uh, just just really internalize that uh, go and and research research and, and watch documentaries uh, watch what the health watch rotten that uh, it's on Netflix I think both of those are Netflix cowspiracy um, look up the Dominion movement. Uh, watch Dominion uh, when you're ready. It's a, you know, it's a pretty graphic one, but uh, Earthlings as well. So uh, we have Sean Munson that comes out to vigils with LA Animal State regularly. Um, you know, before they had their baby, uh, he was out all the time. So you know, definitely support and uh, watch those documentaries. You'll learn so much from them. And uh, you know, and you don't have to watch the hardcore ones. You can watch. Uh, 
um, the other ones like forks over knives and um, you know you can really you can really learn by uh, just just watching things and reading things and looking things up on online the information is there and it's readily available to you and if anybody ever has questions for us we would be more than happy to try to answer those questions it seems like there's a lot more information today than there was 10 15 years ago yes. um, and it's being shared what could the public do um, to get the word out uh, just share it share it with other people tell everybody how about creating their own content yeah you can yeah definitely I mean that content has to come from somewhere but um, if you don't want to create your own content, then uh, you know just share share other information, plant that seed because we want we want to have somewhere to grow as a species, and uh, we're going to have to evolve if we're going to survive. And there's really only one way, and I'd like to say that's my opinion, but there really is only one way, and that is through veganism. That is through a compassionate, conscientious lifestyle. Now, you're coming to a wrap. Tonight's vigil is coming to a close. Yes. Exactly what we're gonna do. You're going to be back here next week, every week, for, until the end of the year. Yes. Yes, that is, that is definitely the plan. Um, we're here every Wednesday. Uh, right now, the time is 7.30 to 10.30. And then on Sundays with LA Animal Save, uh, they have theirs from 7 to 9. So please uh, come out when you can if you want to. Uh, if you feel compelled to be here, please come. Uh, we need all hands on deck here. We need as many people as possible out here to, to spread the word and to give love to these pigs before they go into the slaughterhouse. Um, you know, it's it's very um, it's very important work that we're doing out here, and nobody's getting paid to, to be out here. But it's it's all just just love. It's love for the animals. It's love for the planet. It's love for each other. It was a very peaceful vigil. It's very sweet, very kind. Everyone's loving and affectionate. Um, you know, uh, activists are oft often painted with a very uh, dark brush. Um, what do you have to say to that? Um, that's just, that's not the vibe here. And I, I can't say that that's uh, the vibe everywhere. But here, uh, we come in peace. We come in love. Uh, the SAVE movement is a love-based movement. So this is not a protest. This is just us being here and trying to get as close as we can to the suffering of these our fellow beings on this planet and trying to, to help make it stop peacefully. It was a very moving experience for myself. It was, it's my second vigil. I've been very scared to come and emotionally experience the, um, the atrocities you, that you witness day in and day out. Um, I, I, I admire you for being here and, and all the viewers um, that are here with us today, right now, on uh, live on James' channel. If you have any questions, I hope in 2019 you're all amazing, guys. Never give up. Thank you for your compassion for animals. Thank you. God bless you all. You too. It's very sweet. Yeah. Yes, they're giving them water. Some have already collapsed. Yes. Yeah. When, when you go and read the messages, it's everyone. This is so powerful to be here. Um, here with Ellen, uh, she's one of the lead organizers and on the board of Animal Animal Alliance Network, and it's their one year anniversary. And it is the first vigil of the year, and these animals are not having a happy New Year. No, there's no holiday for these animals. There's never a holiday for them. So, you know, but we, we can be here for them. And that's incredibly important, in, in my opinion, to, to show them, like, mercy, to show them love, to show them that not all humans are bad. You know, and this is their final stop. This is their final stop. And the final stop that they get to hear you and smell you and feel your touch is very um, rewarding. Um, and get a sip of water. And a sip yeah, of water. A sip of that water. They don't get for hours because they're traveling. Sometimes days. Days. Yeah, sometimes days. Uh, you know, they drink three to five gallons of water a day. And so for days to not get water, and uh, from my sources, I hear that they don't get water in there. So. 
you know, this is, this is it. That little sip of water is that last act of mercy that they will experience uh, before their lives are taken from them. What can we tell the pregans um, that are watching this when they see a truck go by? What do you want them to know when they see a truck go by when they're traveling? Oh, I mean, I just, I want them to know that we've all been there. We've all been vegans. Um, there's very few of us that have been vegan our whole life or even vegetarian our whole lives. And so we've been there. I used to eat bacon too. I used to eat burgers too. So, you know, th th we don't come from a place of judgment. We just hope that seeing this, that seeing this footage, seeing these animals will maybe help them find mercy in their hearts for them. And, and you can stop this by not buying them, by not eating them. And as Patty Shaker says, peace begins on your plate. And so you can literally facilitate peace by not eating animals. You can save the world. And that's incredibly powerful. And it takes each and every one of us to do that. And you are doing that, Ellen. Thank you for your time, for your commitment, your dedication to saving the animals and the planet and the humans that walk the terrain. Bless you and your future angel baby. <laughs> Thank you. Vegan baby. Vegan, Vegan baby, baby warrior. Baby. Yeah. Vegan baby warrior. Yes, yes. Yeah, we'll be out here. <laughs> Ellen, thank you so much for your time and thank dedication. You. I appreciate you so much. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, the pig vigil is coming to a close. Ellen has given her last words. Jack is closing. This is it, everyone. Another truck coming out. Her again. Another food. Animals are slaughtered. About 40,000 animals a second every day every slaughterhouse worldwide. This is an empty truck. And to know that those souls will never see daylight again. I'm Patrizia Barreto signing out for Jane Unchained. This is Animal Alliance Network and LA Animal Save and March of Silence. This is the first vigil of the year and we are coming to a close thank you so much for tuning in thank you for joining us we will be here again very soon if you have any questions please feel free leave some comments and we'll respond again thank you so much for your time peace begins on your plate go vegan Patrizia Barreto for Jane Unchained.